that's an alternative picture. Now, what we learn when we learn language is a space of possible sentences. We learn uh, a grammar, a space of possible, well, families of terms, adjectives, nouns, and so forth. Uh, learning to use language is acquiring a skill, just like learning to play the guitar or the flute or to um, dribble a basketball and shoot it through a hoop. Uh, it's a skill. Is it the skill of manipulating the words? No, I think it's ultimately the skill of manipulating your conspecific uh, cerebral cortex. Uh, we don't realize that's what we're doing when we talk to other people, but I'm manipulating your cognition, and when you talk back, you're manipulating mine. That's an alternative view of language uh, to the one that you gave voice to, which I grant you is perhaps the standard view. Uh, words are like signs, and signs uh, signify uh, their object. No, I want to say back away from the individual things. Look at the map, conceptual map as a whole, or a family of maps and see how, as a whole, they represent a domain all at once. And then the question facing any creature is, where am I in this domain of possibilities right here and now? And there's color possibilities and so on and so forth. Now, I don't want to play down the importance of language. And I, I want to reconceive, however, what its role is, how it works. I think it's a secondary skill. And I'll close with an example that always moved me. There's something. A uh, condition known as global aphasia, and uh, a member of my extended family, uh, head nurse at Vancouver General Hospital, got it in her uh, late 40s. Aunt Betty, we called her. And she lost, she had a massive uh, stroke on her left side of her brain where Broca's area and Ber Bernicke's area, all those things that manipulate both the production and the uh, processing of words come in. She lost her language capacity entirely. She didn't lose her moral character. She could still drive a car and go shopping uh, for uh, breakfast materials. Uh, she was unchanged cognitively in an enormous number of respects. And this case struck me because it was an example of a sophisticated uh, cognitive creature, head nurse at Vancouver General, for heaven's sakes. Uh, and what remained if you took away language entirely? The answer was an awful lot just about everything. She took care of our uh, children uh, the way any loving aunt would. Uh, that lowered my conception of how important language was for at least individual cognition. I still think it's extraordinarily important for science, for politics, for uh, moral discussion. You need to have more than one voice um, making decisions if you're going to and in a mutually corrective relation to one another, and language is the principal means for doing that. As I said, I, my one task is to keep us on time, and <laughs> I think I'm going to have to call an end to Paul's session now, but let's thank him once again. So he will be here. I think he'll be happy to talk to people. Come on up and talk to him. We'll take a 10-minute break and then be back with